It's a completely unprecedented time in America, and uh, we are right in the, not just witnessing history, but we're right in the middle of history, and I think we're at a turning point. It's uh, unlike anything I've ever experienced in my lifetime. And it's, it's coming in the, in the middle of all these other multiple things going on. You know, it'll be 100 days since we declared a state of emergency in our state. We had our first cases of coronavirus, and we've been dealing with that health crisis and uh, the economic fallout. And, and now we've got the uh, tragic death of George Floyd and the completely understandable anger and frustration that has boiled up across America. And it's all of these things happening together in a short period of time. It's, it's really... Uh, Quite unbelievable. I know, Governor, that you praise Baltimore's police as well as its residents for holding peaceful protests, but I'm sure you remember just a few years ago after the death of Freddie Gray, Baltimore erupted into violence. What do you think has changed between then and now? Well, I remember it very well. Um, I had just been governor for 90 days. Uh, when uh, we had the worst violence in 47 years break out in our largest city, it was a quite a different situation than what we experienced this time. In, in the first few hours, we had 400 businesses and homes burned and looted and destroyed and 137 police and firefighters injured and the city was overwhelmed and out of control. We learned a lot from that. And I, I think five years later, we, we've made a lot of progress both on the side of the police department and on the community who said, we don't want to see that violence. We don't want to burn down our own city. I was really proud of the citizens of, of Baltimore. It was thousands of people came out and peacefully protested. I mean, look, we certainly have by no means uh, solved all the problems of Baltimore or in police departments across our state, but we have taken some really big steps and made some real progress. First of all, we passed criminal justice reform in our state, the most aggressive in America. We did it before the federal bill was passed and they modeled it on what we did here in Maryland. We lowered our prison population by more than 49 other states in the country. Uh, we lowered uh, sentences for many different crimes other than violent uh, crimes, which is still a problem. And we, you know, 90% of the citizens in Baltimore want, want us to get tough on violent crimes. Governor Hogan, as you well know, there have been suggestions for defunding the police, really taking a lot of that money, if not all of it, and investing more in communities, in social services and programs. What do you think of that idea? And do you have any plans to consider it? I think the idea of defunding or reducing funding for police is a terrible idea. We've been able to improve things by investing more in our police, in recruitment, in training, in equipment, try to teach people about de-escalation. We've got a very diverse police department, that's majority, uh, minority. And I think they're better equipped, better trained, body cameras. They spend a lot of time in the community working with uh, folks. And I think it's really helped. The problems are not solved by any means, uh, don't get me wrong, but there's a little bit more trust and a little bit more communication and spending more time listening to the concerns and trying to work together is what it's really all about. The second part of the question about investing more into some of the other areas, we've been investing record funding into our schools and more money into the social programs. And I think you've got to do both. You've got to invest in those communities and give people more opportunities. And you've got to help with some of the underlying uh, socioeconomic problems. But eliminating or defunding police is not the way. You were on the call when President Trump told the governors that they looked weak and needed to dominate, his words, not mine, the protesters. What was your reaction at that moment, Governor Hogan? First, I thought it was that was the wrong uh, way to go about it. I thought it was terrible the, the way they moved in on those protesters. But to a certain extent, in Baltimore, there, I don't think you should dominate in the respect of go in there and get physical with the protesters. But in the 2015, uh, my theory was peace through strength. So the city was on fire. It was, the police force was overwhelmed. They were throwing cinder blocks and bricks and injuring police and firefighters. The citizens of the of this Baltimore city were crying out for somebody to come save the city. So we did send in an overwhelming force of uh, state police and National Guard, which is what they're there for. So I think you, you can't just let violent rioters take over a city. So on that part, I agree. 
uh, but you also can't infringe upon the rights of people that are protesting and that's a very important right that we've got to protect at all costs so i think it was a totally wrong way to go about it if you look at what happened in washington with that response and you look at what happened in baltimore less than 40 miles away it was almost a completely opposite response and result how did you feel about what happened in Washington? Peaceful protesters being pelted and tear gas to pave the way for President Trump to do a photo op in front of St. John's Church. You know, I can't speak to what the motivation was. I think it was the wrong move and it certainly caused the, a lot of negative reaction. I'm not, obviously it was not a decision I would have made and I think most people agree it was the wrong thing to do. I didn't support the president in the last election, and um, I have been, as the chairman of the National Governors uh, Association, uh, and for five years, probably the most outspoken Republican governor in America, and one of the folks that stands up and most frequently tells him when I think he's wrong, both to his face and publicly. If I think the president's doing something right and I support a policy, I'll say so. I think the president is uh, doing something wrong. I'm, I'm certainly not one of those Republicans who's afraid to come out and speak out against the president. I never have been and never will be. As Maryland continues to reopen, I know you're getting some pressure from businesses to open even further and, and faster. What are we learning about the virus's spread and what are you most concerned, not only about reopening, but uh, when it comes to protesting? So on the reopening, we, um, as chair of the National Governors Association, we kind of uh, wrote a book, gave guidelines, NGA put out a, a guideline for all the governors about a safe and effective reopening. Here in Maryland, we brought together some of the smartest doctors and scientists from across the, not only our state, but in America, from places like Johns Hopkins and the University of Maryland Medical System. We have a really safe and effective gradual reopening because we need to get our economy back on track. But we've also completely flattened the curve. We've dropped our positivity rate by more than 70%. Um, and we're gonna continue to slowly and safely reopen things. It's a balancing act because uh, you wanna make sure that you get people back to work, that we help our small businesses, but that we don't cause that spike. And so uh, there's some pressure to reopen, but you know, Washington Post poll just said 85% of the people in our state approve of, this, of the job we've done on the reopening. So I'm just gonna keep doing it gradually. We are concerned about the protesters. Uh, I know that Scott Gottlieb, the former FDA commissioner said, you know, about two and a half times more chance of getting the virus by being out there in those protests. Just a week or two ago, we had 10 person limits on gatherings and now we have 10,000 people gathering. So we're gonna encourage everyone who was involved with those thousands of people to go out and get tested. It's a concern of all, um, all the governors across America that these uh, we wanna make sure people express their frustrations, but we don't want them getting sick and spreading the virus. How concerned are you about the unemployment rate and so many people being out of jobs? I mean, it's still a dire situation. What can you do about that in the state of Maryland? It's, uh, it's, it's the biggest thing that I'm worried about right now. At, at, at the beginning of this, we were focused on saving lives and stopping the spread and keeping hundreds of thousands of people from getting sick. And now it's, while well, we're still concerned about that, you know, we're about 9.7% unemployment, which is uh, much lower than the rest of the nation. We're the eighth best economy in the country right now, but that's still really bad. We've tripled in unemployment since the beginning of this pandemic. But some of the other states are hurting more than we are, but that doesn't mean we don't have a hundreds of thousands of people that are suffering that we've got to try to help and get them back to work because this is a, a terrible economic crisis. The states stepped up and were on the front lines of this entire battle on the pandemic. We stepped up and, and took the difficult steps that had to be taken to save lives and to keep people safe. And now the states are going to need the help of the federal government. We're not looking for a bailout. We're not looking for a handout. We're not looking to solve problems that existed long ago. We're looking for the past 90 days of uh, money that we've expended and the, and, the, and the shortfalls that we're going to be experiencing as a result of this pandemic. We don't want to be putting tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of state employees also in those unemployment lines. We don't want to be laying off nurses and teachers and police officers and firefighters and folks like that. In our state, we're doing our best to avoid that, but we're going to be, there's going to be a lot of belt tightening and a lot of things that we'd love to fund that aren't going to be able to get funded.